Tom Hartman is a liberal radio host, and he has a TV show on RT as well. Uh, he really is an extremely intelligent guy, and I admire his work. I followed it closely for a long time. And typically, he's not an in-your-face kind of guy. I like to think of him, of him as the calm alternative to somebody like Bill Maher or my business partner, Jank Uger. But listen to him get a little pissed off and take conservative radio host Dennis Prager to town in a debate about racism. Honoring race is a fascist notion. A dishonoring race having nothing to do with race or ignoring race is an American notion. That's a bizarre statement. Okay, uh, to you it is because you're on the left. You think being black is important, being white is important, being yellow is important. I think, I think human... Uh, decency is important. I divide the world by decent and indecent. So you would do nothing to remedy years and years of racism and slavery? Okay, that's a myth. The, uh, the it's, a, it's a myth that, that the average African-American family in the United States has a $5,000 net worth and the average white family in the United States has an $86,000 net, net worth? That's not a myth. And Those are statistics. And that, is the result, and that is the result of racism? Yes, Okay, so we have a different read. I think it's a values issue. You so think what, you, you, you think I it's because black people are born with different values than white people? Why would you even imply that I said that? You just said that. You said it's, a, you said it's not a racial issue, it's a values issue. Are you saying that, that, that black people have less net worth in the United States than white people do because they are, they are born with different values? Yes, I'll give you one of the values. The value in black life, given the illegitimacy rate, that's a word you on the left don't like to use, so I won't use it, out of wedlock rate, is far higher than that of the rest of the society. That's a value. Don't you that's think that that's a, a natural and logical consequence of the poverty that is the result of years, decades, no, and centuries of racism and genocide? It's between left and right. Poverty is the result of illegitimacy. Illegitimacy is not the result of poverty. No, I'd say that it's a vicious cycle. Oh, yeah, it's a values issue. You know, inequality is a values issue. The birth rate is a values issue. Crime is a values issue. If you bring that up, you can only be making uh, one of two statements. Either you're saying, you know, something happened in the previous generation, or even something's happening right now that would lead to that being so, right? Uh, you know, a higher illegitimate birth rate, uh, higher levels of, in of income inequality, higher levels of poverty and crime, or you're saying that group is inherently inferior. It's one of the two, right? And there is no evidence to say, oh, you know what, they actually are inferior inherently. Now, how can I say that? What basis do I have to say that? Well, look, when it comes to crime, for example, the Republicans always say, well, more uh, African Americans are locked up, so hey, it is what it is. It's just how they are, right? But they don't mention that when you look at middle class whites versus middle class blacks, the crime rate is exactly the same. The reason that people have children before they marry is values, not poverty. And you don't think that poverty influences values? Uh, that is correct. I do not. That you don't think that poverty produces despair, that poverty produces despondency, that poverty produces that depression, the, in the that poverty States produces America, mental illness? Everywhere else, poor people... The vast majority of people prior to our generation or my generation uh, were poor uh, in America and everywhere else. They were not poor. If you look at the, at the great prosperity in the United States during the Eisenhower administration, the Republican Eisenhower administration, the, the Kennedy administration, the, the Nixon administration, I mean, if you look at that era from the, from the 1950s until the 1980s, until Reaganomics kicked in and started repudiating the New Deal, we had... First of all, it was the only time in the history of the United States that we had three consecutive decades with GDP growth over 3.2%. 3 it had never happened before. Secondly, we created the largest and most prosperous middle class in the history of the earth, and, and, and about a third of that is now gone. We had a third of America was unionized. Now it's down to 11%. You had corporations paying 31% per, of the total federal income. Now it's down to 11%. I mean, it's, it, we had a, you and I grew up in the great prosperity, Dennis, and what we are looking at is the consequence of 32 years of Reaganomics. It's ripped this country apart. Nailed it. In other words, what Tom is saying, when you give people an equal opportunity the outcomes will be relatively equal. 
for every different type of group, whether it's Asian people or white people or black people or whatever the case is. Now, that doesn't mean that values has no impact on it whatsoever. Of course it plays a part. But the bottom line is, if you want to give equal opportunity, and then after that you can say, well, look, there's some slight differences and maybe that's an issue. Okay, well, in that scenario you could say, well, we might want to have a discussion about values. But until that equal opportunity is granted, it's not a legitimate point to make. And again, as Tom is uh, laying out pretty clearly, whenever we have uh, provided equal opportunity, these things aren't as big of an issue. You don't have as big, uh, you know, you obviously don't have, by definition, you don't have as much poverty, you don't have as much income inequality, you don't have as much, uh, you know, STD exchanges or illegitimate birth rate or crime. All of that stuff goes down. So Tom Hartman for the win. Dennis Prager, how's it taste?